hi, howdy, and hello everyone, Wiggity here, welcome back, and as promised, here's another Stardew Valley 1.5 update showcase, showing off 65 quality of life improvements and balance changes. Now there have been quite a few other fixes added into the game as well. If you'd like to check out the list of everything fixed, the change log is in the description. There are a lot of spoilers on that list, so be warned. Now as for this video, there might be some light spoilers, but nothing too major. And with that said, let's just jump right in, starting off the list with some great quality of life improvements. First up, you'll notice in Lewis's house there is a new lost and found box. This coincides with the new special orders, request board. If you can't complete the task, you'll find your items returned to you there. Sitting on some chairs. Yes, that's right. We can sit everywhere. In the pub, in the house, anything that you can sit on, you should do it. And to go along with that, we can now play certain furniture outside like chairs and tables and decorative items. <laughs> Not your bed. Unfortunately, you can't sleep outside. Don't want to sleep in the rain. Underneath the social tab, you can now see if you've talked to somebody yet today. Uh, so you can now talk to people while on your horse. That's, that's much more realistic. Speaking of talking to people, now when you talk to people, they will face you when you start talking to them, not when you finish talking to them. It's always been a little bit awkward talking to people about some important stuff and not making eye contact. Both Penny and the dwarf now appropriately like specific artifacts. If you check out your cooking collections tab, it'll show the items that you need for the recipes to cook so you don't have to go all the way to your stove. And also, instead of being grayed out completely, now you can see what you know but haven't crafted versus what you don't have a recipe for yet. With both cooking and crafting, you can now see how much you can make with what you have on you. This organize button now combines your partial stacks. Inventory sorting has been improved with sorting alphabetically by quality and it no longer changes your tool order. This one can be easy to miss, but while you're looking inside your chests, the community center button can be found in here as well. Now this one is super helpful. You can donate different quality items at the community center. Very nice. Now this is amazing. You can actually push filled chests with no tool equipped. After you've shipped all your items for the day, the shipment sheet now shows how much each item sold for individually as well as the bulk. Your quest log will give you a little nudge. It'll show an arrow in the morning if you have pending completed quests. During your time sensitive quests, it'll now say final day instead of one day left. Our shop menus have been slightly improved, such as the items that you can stack with the purchase that you have will stay highlighted and also pressing escape or the B button will move your purchase directly into your inventory. If you happen to have a full inventory, you can still purchase recipes now instead of having to make space. You can now buy up to 10 coconuts from Sandy on Mondays. A very special item will have Pierre selling all seeds all the time. If you have a stack of the same item you are donating to the museum, it now only picks up one and leaves the other in your inventory. And you can also cancel placing an item without exiting out of the donation screen. If you have something in an incubator but your barn or coop is full, you now get a notification when you enter the building. It can be pretty easy to lose track of where you are in the mines. Now, the infestation levels will show you what level you're on. 
Oh yes, for you slime ranchers out there, sprinklers can now water inside of slime hutches. Hose can no longer displace your sprinklers. It's gonna make it so much easier at the beginning of a new season. Plus, now you no longer have to put a piece of flooring underneath your sprinkler in order to keep it there. Removing a crystallarium no longer makes you lose the gem. It'll pop right out. Ooh, our jukebox now has a random setting. In our game options, you can change the sound of when a fish bites. And if you really want to, you can mute the sound of your farm animals too. It does mute your cat or dog as well. Zoom options have been greatly enhanced. We can get real close and also scale the UI and the game separately. Your buff icons will now slightly pull so you can notice when they're about to run out. Alrighty, now let's go over a few balance changes and adjustments. There have been some improvements to Journey of the Prairie King, including being able to save and resume the game. With the addition of Bone Fragments, Skullbrazier now takes Bone Fragments instead of Hardwood to craft. It makes much more sense. The Workbench dropped its price from 3,000 down to 2,000 gold, which is quite a bit more reasonable. Some of the processing machines like the bee house, tapper, mushroom boxes, and worm bin will now always be ready to collect in the morning of the ready date. Repairing a fence now repairs it all the way instead of to half condition. I was wondering why they were always deteriorating after one season. Changes have been made to the ducks. They are much better prices and you can pick them up for 1200 gold instead of the original 4000. And duck feathers have been adjusted to show up much more often, as well as sell for more too. Mahogany seeds, one of the new tree items, has a 10% chance of coming from stumps and logs or any monster in the secret woods. Catching junk no longer negatively affects your tackle. And with buffs reaching level 15 of fishing, now allows you to cast much farther. Wilderness golems now have a much higher chance at dropping rice shoots, making a wilderness farm much more profitable at the start of a new game. During the fair, there are a couple new items that are available for star tokens. At the fair, the slingshot and fishing mini games now give you double star tokens. Definitely makes them worth it. Slingshot controls work a little bit different and in my personal opinion, much better now. It now aims at the cursor position and is fired by holding and releasing the mouse or gamepad fire button. Now, you can still use the previous version if you would really like to. It is enabled in the option menu. The gem nodes that you can find in the mines have had some changes. They are no longer affected by mine level, can drop diamond, and now give you mining XP. While spelunking in the mines, wood barrels can now drop basic retaining soil, and frost barrels can now drop quality retaining soil the chance of lead rods dropping have lowered. It was getting a bit out of hand and these are kind of heavy. Killing Iridian bats now counts towards the monster eradication goal. The spooky scary skeletons now have a 4% chance of dropping a bone sword. Some monsters in Skull Cavern now have a chance at dropping the ever elusive red cabbage seed like the serpents. The special cooldown on daggers and clubs have been adjusted. The dagger is now faster and the club cooldown is now slower.
The dagger special move now pins your enemy down until the last stab and then knocks them back. This makes me really want to try some more dagger play. And a few other combat adjustments were made, like improving the dagger critical chance, immunity now has a better chance of reducing your status debuffs, and there is also a reduced damage bonus from the Desperado profession. The rare random stone owl and strange capsule trigger night event has been fixed. It's now much more likely that you'll see it. Still kind of rare though. Let's look at a few multiplayer changes. I know so many people who are excited about this local split screen has been added. Your farmhands can now move buildings too. If you let them, that is. When it comes to playing with the Return Scepter, everyone goes to their own place instead of having a party at the main homestead. New chat messages have been added when farmhands do certain things. During shared events, like unlocking the community center for the first time for example, you are no longer force warped to the event location. Alright, let's look over a few other changes as well. Holding down your action button to harvest and collect while moving now no longer repeats the special attack on your weapon, making harvesting and collecting worlds easier. You can actually place a floor tile underneath you instead of having to have it in front of you. When going down a ladder or shaft, you can hit the Y key to answer instead of having to click it. And probably one of the better things on this list, there has been a slight change to dinosaurs. They now lay down and also have better animations. <laughs> now this isn't every single fix and adjustment added to the game, such as the museum scarecrows being added back into the night market, but these are definitely the ones that stuck out to me the most. There were so many great life improvements that were made that I am quite happy with. Probably one of my favorite changes is being able to see if I actually talked to somebody that day or uh, honestly sitting on chairs and putting furniture outside for decorating. It's going to be fantastic. What about you? What are your favorite improvements on this list here? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. Well friends, I really appreciate you checking out this showcase. All the likes and love have really motivated me to keep more videos coming out. As always, I'm Wickedy. Thank you so much for hanging out in the valley with me and I will see you in the next video.